Hi everyone, this is Against Time from Grinderschool.com. Today I'll be doing something a little different for you. We'll be doing a hand history review of recent nine-man sit and goes played by Grinder School member PGM1971 on Poker Stars. Uh, this will be an opportunity not only to review sit and goes played by another player from a different perspective, but also to look at the new structure changes that have occurred on Poker Stars. Uh, this site has recently incorporated antes in the earlier levels, uh, and we'll get a chance to look at that, mostly in the second sit and go here. The first one, uh, I believe part of the hand history is missing, uh, but there were a couple important spots here that I wanted to uh, draw attention to, and the second one we'll get to see the earlier blind levels as well. Um, so we'll go ahead and get started here. As is typically the case when I review my own games, I'll mostly be drawing attention to the hands where the uh, where the player does get involved. Uh, there will be some spots where uh, PGM does not get involved that I will draw attention to uh, to talk about hand ranges and opening ranges and whether you know the situation was played a little too tightly or a little too loosely. Uh, so we'll go ahead and get started here. And this first sit and go, I'll uh, be started in the 6120 blind levels. Once again, I don't have the initial hands at this tournament. The second tournament, we will have the entire uh, tournament available to us. Um, uh, we get a raise here from the hijack from uh, an unknown player. Um, this is the spot that I think was played too tightly. Uh, this ace queen here should be shoved all in as a not not necessarily a re-steal, but an all-in value raise. Uh, generally, facing a hijack opening raise, unless your opponent is extremely tight, um, you should generally assume that your hand is ahead of that range. Uh, while PGM does have about 30 blinds here, the effective stack is not so deep. The deepest player here uh, has about 22 blinds. So this would be an excellent re-steal or all-in value raise opportunity uh, that I would highly recommend this player take. I would shove all in here with the ace queen, and I would do it very routinely. Um, so a little bit of a missed opportunity there. Okay, here with the 10s, he's going to raise it up to 300. Uh, perfectly fine with that raise size. As most of you know, uh, my opinion on raise size in the later blind levels is that you reduce the raise size to increase uh, cost efficiency of a steal while still preserving most of your fold equity. In say the 5, 10, 10, 20, and 15, 30 blind levels when ship stacks start at 1500, you'll generally see me make full 3x raises. Sometimes in the 1530 I'll go down to 75 or 2.5x raise. Uh, as the blinds uh, increase in value and the effective stacks uh, diminish in depth, uh, I will generally lower my raise size. Uh, 300 is acceptable. Uh, it's on the higher end of uh, raise sizes that I'd recommend, but it is perfectly fine. Anything less than 3x really is fine here, and a lot of good regs that I know well will make this 300 raise size, so this is fine. What's important is that whatever you choose in a particular blind level, you remain consistent with that raise size so that your hand ranges don't become transparent. Uh, we do get a flat call here by the player in the big blind. The flop is jack nine, uh, nine two clubs. Um, this player checks to hero. Um, uh, SPR is just under five here. Um, it's a very coordinated board. However, I do recommend the C bet. He chooses to bet three sixty here. Uh, I probably recommend a little bit larger of a bet. There's so many draws available here that you really want to charge those draws uh, so that they're drawing against the odds. By betting 360 here, um, he's putting his opponent in a position that he can draw fairly cheaply should he have a straight or a flush draw here. He does choose to check call here. A six of diamonds comes off on the turn, and he leads into uh, PGM for 360, the same bet as uh, was made on the flop. Um, I don't have any history with this player, Fix01. However, my instincts in this spot are that this player is attempting to slow this down so that he can get to the river uh, very cost effectively. None of the draws were yet completed. If he had, say, a, a jack that he wanted to defend, to defend or even trip nines, um, I believe this player would make a larger lead out. Um, than the 360. I think the 360 is an attempt to slow this down so that he can get to the river cost effectively and hit his draw. 
Um, that being the case, with his bet of 360, the uh, pot is now larger than the remaining uh, opponent's stack size. I would recommend shoving all in here. It is an aggressive and risky play, uh, but my experience and instincts tell me that this player is trying to get to the river more cheaply. And at this point, um, I don't think folding is the right play. Uh, I believe a fold is made here. Um, and I think calling merely sets your opponent up for the opportunity to either hit his hand and get paid on the river or push you off your hand on the river because it shows a reluctance to continue on the hand if you're just flat calling for 360 here. I would highly recommend a shove all in here. It prevents all the draws from getting to the river effect cost effectively. They'll have to draw against the odds. And the hand, uh, the pocket tens is still likely best at this point based on the action we've seen. So I recommend a shove all in. However, we do see a fold. Sevens here, um, you should be raising this hand. Uh, he does choose to raise it, and he is consistent with the raise size, which I like as well. That's very important. Uh, if you're raising certain amounts with certain hands, uh, observant opponents will certainly catch on to it. Uh, that's not necessarily an issue at some of the lower stakes games, like maybe the five or the seven dollar game. But once you move up to the fifteen dollar game and higher, you will definitely have uh, regs solid enough that they'll notice you're raising certain amounts with certain hands. They will pick up on this and use this information again against you. So I like that he's being consistent here with his raise sizes. No defense. Queen five suit is going to be a fold from this position. Okay, he chooses to raise with jack 10 from the button, I would do so as well. You could even raise it from a hijack in this blind level. And once again, he is consistent with his raise size, which is what I would recommend. Uh, no defense. Not quite good enough to raise the 510 suited, or the 6 deuce. Okay, it looks like we move into 5-handed play. 10-8 is going to be a fold. Okay, this is an important hand. Um, we need to look at this one because this is a place where a lot of mistakes are made. When you have a small pair like this and you get a raise from middle position, there are always a couple options available. Uh, you can make a re-steal, uh, you can flat, or you can fold. Uh, any smaller 3-bet at 20 blinds effectively, which is the case here because we're in the 8160 blinds, um, it's going to be a mistake. Any 3-bet will commit you to the hand, but by making it, say, uh, 800 or so, uh, you make it very awkward for yourself post-flop with a hand like 5. So don't ever make the smaller 3-bet here. That's the worst thing you can do. You can't really flat call this because if you look at the odds by flatting, this player is getting almost exactly 10 to 1 uh, by flat calling. However, if you look at the players behind, any one of them can shove all in and, and uh make an awkward spot for the player with the five. So flatting is a mistake um, for sure. Um, I wouldn't recommend doing it. And the smaller three bet is also a mistake. So we have two options remaining. We can three bet shove or we can fold. Um, and both plays may be valid depending on the looseness of the initial raiser. Against a loose aggressive player capable of folding hand or uh, a good reg here, I would certainly three bet shove. The fives is an excellent play and the best play available uh, at our disposal. Um, and against a tighter player, I would recommend a fold. Uh, PGM chooses to fold here. I'm not really sure how loose this player is. I don't have HUD stats available because this was not my tournament. So I'm not really quite certain what the best play is, but I can narrow it down to two options uh, of the many available here. And the best play would either be a shove or a fold, certainly not a flat call or a smaller three bet as we already eliminated. Um, I would say that most of the time, your best play here is going to be a shove. Um, but if this player is tight enough, uh, then you would fold the hand. So not quite enough information available to me at the moment to tell you uh, which way I would go with it. But I would probably lean towards about two times and three shoving, one time and three folding here, uh, based on the looseness of the opponent here. If he were, say, like uh, a 32-20 uh, or something like that, I would certainly shove it. Uh, if he were like a 25-20, I would shove it. Uh, if he were an 18-16, uh, I'd probably let it go. 9-8 offsuit from the hijack, in my opinion, is a steal. It's a great steal opportunity. Uh, all the players are deep enough. This one's very borderline, but all the players are deep enough that you could fold to a re-steal. You wouldn't be committed by odds to call. Uh, and it's a great uh, deceptive raise from a marginal hand that plays well post-flop. 
Uh, and I would make the steal here. He neglects to do so. It's a little bit too tight, in my opinion. I would make it 320 for a min raise and try to steal here with a 9-8. Obviously, uh, fold here. Uh, generally, the rule that I suggest for players is if you're getting 2-1 to one on your odds and a call on a loss would not cripple you to make the call, I don't think we're quite getting those odds here. It is very close, though. Uh, generally, when this player has around uh, 2.5 blinds with no ante or just over 3 with an ante, you can make that call. Um, it's a, it's a closer to 4 blinds here, so it's okay to fold still. Uh, this I would recommend shoving. Uh, he chooses to limp here. This is a mistake. Uh, you can't limp call a shove, uh, but you can certainly shove profitably against any opponent regardless of their calling range. As you see here, he limps, he faces a shove, and he has to fold. Uh, certainly just shove yourself here. Uh, this is a rule that I suggest, and I've suggested many times to players in my videos. Um, if you're in blind versus blind play, and you the effective stack is 13 blinds or less, and you're in the small blind, it's folded to you. If you play the strictly shove-fold strategy, you would show a profit in the long run against pretty much any player out there. Um, and certainly all the way up to the high stakes. Uh, now that's not to say that it's an optimized strategy. There are probably some strategies better than this, but it's a superior strategy than the vast majority of what even regs are using out there, just to play shove fold up to 13 blinds and blind versus blind. And you'd certainly show a profit doing so. So I would suggest shoving this. You could shove this all the way up to, uh, well, more than 13 blinds certainly, so you could certainly shove it here, and I would suggest doing so. Nine should be a raise here. Uh, we do see a raise. He makes it 400. Once again, that's fine as long as he's consistent with it. Good fold with the queen a. Not quite good enough to call that shove. Uh, this should be a shove as well. He chooses to fold here. And he limps before. Um, both of these plays are mistakes with the 7-8 suited. This is an easy shove. Once again, you could shove this hand uh, for even more than 13 blinds. And once again, I recommend playing shove fold of 13 blinds or less. Um, only when a reg gets very experienced can really much of an improvement be made upon that shove fold strategy at 13 blinds. And that would be uh, an adjustment that maybe a professional or a semi-professional player would make. Uh, even a solid grinder who's you know making quite a bit of money part-time. Uh, would probably improve his strategy if he just played shove fold blind versus blind at 13 or less. So that is my suggestion here, and this should be a shove. Um, I would shove to isolate here. Uh, batter days, five blind shove range under the gun is certainly looser than twos. Uh, even though you're certain to be in a coin flip situation here for the most part, uh, it's a coin flip situation with 425 chips of dead money, which is almost half the stack of the initial shover, who's almost certainly shoving almost any two. Uh, if it were folded to you, you would open to shove the deuces here. Uh, that being the case, I would recommend shoving over this to isolate, get it in a heads up pot, and give yourself a situation where you can potentially gain a substantial part of your chip stack in value here, about half your stack. Um, or if you were to lose, you would still have about 1,700 chips uh, which is about eight and a half blinds, which is still a profitable shove stack. So I would recommend shoving to isolate all in here rather than folding. Uh, whereas before I recommend stealing with 9A, um, the spot isn't quite as good. Uh, the reason why is you're raising through uh, two short stack players to whom you'd be committed by odds to call. And we certainly don't want to create that situation for ourselves. Uh, 13, 13 and a half blinds deep, 9, 8 offsuit is not going to be a profitable shove from the hijack, so folding is the correct choice. This is a good play here. Can't call this with jack 7. Can't do anything with the king 3 suit after the raise. Had it been folded to PGM, I would hope he would shove here. It is a profitable shove, once again, less than 13 blinds deep effectively, but since there's a player already coming in for a raise, just let it go. Okay, this is probably a good resteal spot. Um, I don't hardly ever flat raises at like 12 blinds, 11 blinds, 10 blinds, almost never, um, because it's almost never the right play. Uh, folding here is too tight from against a cutoff raise. Uh, I would come over the top with a resteal here with the queen jack. 
as you can see, there's certainly still fold equity available. Um, this player raises it up and does get a fold. So it, we definitely, definitely the queen jack could have been used as a restill here. Four X raises, especially when you see play, players make smaller raises than this, are often indicative of strength. It's generally a hand, something like sevens, ace, jack, uh, that a player feels is a strong hand but is uncomfortable playing post flop. It shows a bit of inexperience when players do this, and it's almost never a, a strong player who does this. But it does tell you that they're unlikely to give up the hand, so you don't have much fold equity on a restill. It also tells you approximately where that. Uh, hand is in the hand strength range. I would guess this player's range to be something like fives through jacks, fives through queens. Uh, I would isolate aces and kings out of the range, and I wouldn't think it'd be anything weaker than that. And then hands like ace ten through ace king, uh, be a very polarized range would be my guess. And with about ninety to ninety five percent accuracy, you can guess that range when players do this kind of four x raise when they've generally been doing other size raises before that. Fold the jack three, not quite good enough to shove. At this stack size, PGM should be playing a strictly shove fold game. Can't call with the seven eight. Can't get involved with the three six. Uh, three X rays here. Uh, can't do anything with the ten nine. No fold equity. Queen nine is an easy easy shove. Uh, I mean. Yeah. For five blinds here, I'd be shoving pretty much any two cards to avoid the blinds hitting me. Queen nine is certainly good enough, so shove the queen nine. And then obviously I have to call with the ace king. Looks like queen jack will win, and he'll finish in fourth here. Right, let's look at the next game. Okay, this is a little bit longer game. As mentioned, it starts from the earlier blind level, so we can look at... Um, the effect of having this ante earlier on. In general, the resulting uh, strategy will be that you'll be playing some hands a little more aggressively from earlier positions than you otherwise would because there's a little bit more out there to win. Uh, the ante generally increases action among players and gets them more involved. Hands like suited connectors, small pairs, I'd probably be playing in any position uh, if I were the first to enter, whereas I would generally not. Um, if I had a hand, for instance, like pocket deuces here, or even 10-9 suited, I'd likely come in for a raise or at least a limp, uh, even you know, even into seven players here, whereas without the ante, I may be more reluctant to do so. Uh, certainly, he'll be raising queens. He makes it 3x. This is also my standard raise size in the early blind levels. We get a couple players here getting involved. Flop is ace-king-10 with two spades. Very unfavorable flop for queens. I expect he'll just check here. That would be the right play with three opponents. He does choose to do so. Bet of 120 leads out in the turn. I just fold here. I just give it up right now. And he does do so. It's a very disciplined fold, and the fold a good reg would be making in this spot. Queen 9 not quite good enough here. Let's see what happens with this a6. I wouldn't even flat this uh, here. It looks like he chooses to fold as well. Excellent decision, not worth getting involved, especially out of position this early on. Uh, as with the sit and goes before the ante, we're still going to give up on most you know, weak to marginal situations. Uh, we will be getting a little more involved as the aggressor because of the ante, but we won't be flat calling uh, substantially more spots. Uh, we want to preserve this chip stack size and move into the 5100 with a raised fold stack, which would be approximately 1300 chips or more. Jack 9 would be a raise from the button had it been folded to him, but since there's already a raise, I expect him to fold as well. He does choose to do so, that's the right move. 7 should be a raise here. He chooses to limp. Uh, I cannot caution against you this strongly enough. If, if you're in the cutoff for the button and it is folded to you and you choose to play the hand, you should always, 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 and I mean 100% of the time, come in with the raise without exception. Uh, you have the advantage of position. You need to use it and take the initiative in the pot. It blends your range with all the other hands you'd play. Uh, I, ne I literally never open limp the cutoff for the button. I literally never do it, and I don't know uh, any professional players who do it. Uh, so I would recommend a raise here, make it 75 or 90, either is fine. Uh, he flops top set here on a dry board. I'd probably just check this behind. 
Uh, he chooses to bet at it and gets a call. Uh, looks like he bets the turn as well and gets a fold. A little played a little too aggressively on such a dry board, in my opinion. I would check the flop and bet the turn. Uh, sixes, I would open with a raise here. Uh, at least a limp. Uh, folds too tight. Uh, in the 1530, you should be playing all pairs uh, regardless of position, especially if you're the first to enter. Um, some regs will suggest limping here. Some will suggest raising. Uh, none will suggest folding. Uh, I, I really wouldn't fold sixes here. I wouldn't fold deuces here. Uh, I come in with a raise. I come in with a raise with deuces. And I think that's the best way to play it. But uh, there's two school of thoughts on it, and it's pretty evenly split among regs. Some will limp it, and some will raise it. But uh, I would not suggest folding it. You're getting tremendous implied odds on the set uh, with, such a, with such a good hand here. Uh, and I, I would recommend taking advantage of those. Okay, Jack-9. Uh, this is a missed raise. From the cutoff in the 2550, you could start stealing it. From the button in the 1530 and earlier, you could start stealing it. Um, but I would definitely steal this from the cutoff, especially since uh, PGM has a tight image here. Ace-8 suit is going to be a raise from the hijack. He does correctly raise it. He makes the same raise size I use as well, 2.5x. Gets a call here from the cutoff. Uh, flop is king-queen-3 rainbow. Uh, I would suggest a mixture of uh, check the flop, bet the turn, or bet the flop here. Uh, a c-bet here is generally going to be the right play. I would say I would c-bet this like two-thirds of the time. Uh, sometimes I'll make a delayed c-bet to blend my range. Uh, I would delayed c-bet with king-queen as well a fair amount of the time uh, or a set here. And so I want to mix it up when I don't have something as well so I have a little bit of a non-polarized uh, follow-up. Um, but generally you can see bet this. If you don't bet the flop, uh, you should certainly bet the turn. He chooses to check it twice here. This is too tight. You need to bet one street or the other. Uh, or even two barrel would be better than checking twice. Uh, but certainly don't check it twice. It looks like he just tries to check down his ace high. Uh, it does work for him in this situation, but at any any opponent aggression, he would have had to give up the hand. And I generally don't like to play hands in such a way that um, any sign of aggression for my opponent just requires me to surrender. Uh, a poker is played most effectively when it's played aggressively, and that's what I recommend. See what happens with this King Jack suited. I'm perfectly fine with a fold here. Blinds have gone up to 40, 80. Um, he's got about 20 blinds here, a little less. Um, Raise came from an early position and to six players. Uh, if another player had called, you could flat here. Uh, if the raise had come from a later position, you could re-steal here. Uh, but because it's an early position raise and no other callers to increase the odds, um, there's not really many uh, good options available being out of position. I think a fold is probably the right play and a very disciplined one. So I like that he made that fold here. Sevens should be an ISO raise here. He does choose to ISO raise. This is the right play. However, the ISO raise is too small. Um, this is another suggestion I frequently make to players I'm training. Um, opening With your opening raises in the earlier blinds, I recommend 3x. Uh, 2.5x is acceptable. Don't min raise in the early blinds. As the blinds increase, you should lower that raise size and approach a 2x raise. Um, but you don't have to. You can do 2.5 the whole time if you're more comfortable. It's fine. Once the player limps in front of you, however, the game has changed. You don't make those small raises over limps. The reason why is the raise has several purposes here. Uh, you want pre-flop fold equity. You want to take the initiative in the pot, and you want to build a pot uh, with the expectation of having the best hand. And there are other reasons for a raise as well, but these are the primary ones. This raise size does not accomplish the pre-flop fold equity. Uh, no one's going to fold to a 200 raise. I say no one, but I mean... It's going to happen like one time in 20 that someone's going to fold to a 2.5x raise after limping. Um, so you give yourself no preflop fold equity and eliminate one of the primary purposes of an isolation raise. It also induces other players to come along, and you really don't want that. Let's say another player calls here, and let's say the initial limper calls. You're going to have a pot with like 800 chips in it, and you have 1,200 left. How can you see bet that effectively? Well, the answer is you can't. Uh, you don't have enough chips to maneuver. By making it, say, 280 here um, or 300, 
you isolate it so that it's almost certainly a heads up pot uh, and you make it line up better to get all in. Um, I, I would not suggest making this raise size over a limp. It's a good open raise size, but it's not a good isolation raise size. It does get a call as expected. Thankfully, it's only one call, so, the, so there's few enough ships in here that he can actually see bet and get away from this. He gets a check to him. Uh, you should certainly bet like 300 or 350 here. Um, he bets 295. That's fine. Uh, and he does take it down. Let's fold the 9-8. Ace-Jack should be a raise here. It looks like he just folds it. Uh, Ace-Jack is going to be a raise into six players, even in the early blinds. Uh, I know some good regs who only raise into five or less. That's fine. Once the 6120 blinds are here, or even the 5100, you should be raising into six players as a standard. And to five, folding is too tight. Uh, he does choose to fold here. This is very much too tight. Uh, I'm raising ace queen off into eight players, so you should certainly be raising this uh, into this view. Queen eight is going to be a fold. Let's see what happens with this ace deuce. Um, this is this is a spot where looks like he chooses to re-steal. Um, I'm not really sure if this is the way to go or not. Usually a 3x raise in the later blinds is indicative of strength. Uh, when people make this 3 or 4x raise, uh, from the button it's not always a suspect, but I generally give them the range of 5s through queens uh, or ace like ace 10 through ace king. Um, so I think this is too loose for a re-steal. Uh, and he has exactly the range I put it on here. He has ace-jack. So I think this was too loose. It looks like it'll work out for him. Uh, limp here with the jack eight suit is the right play. He does choose to do so. Gets an isolation raise here. Um, odds are really pretty good in this spot. I would still recommend folding, however, because of this short stack. He does choose to fold. Ace-9 should be a steal. He does choose to steal it. I like the 300 raise size. The small 3-bet is indicative of great strength here. He should fold to this 3-bet, and he does choose to do so correctly. King-Queen should be a steal. This is also a mistake. Uh, also into 5 players here. As mentioned, Ace-Jack, uh, you should be raising into 6 in this blind level. Same thing with King-Queen. Sometimes I'll even raise King-Queen to 7 players in this blind level. I'll certainly raise it into 6. And I don't recall the last time I folded it into five players, period. I don't. Um, you'd be fine to get all in with any of the short stacks should they shove. Even if they both shove, it would be an excellent spot for you. So raise the king-queen. A little bit too tight here. Fold the queen four. Not really much for hands here for a second. Let's see what raise size he made here. Okay, he makes 3x again, so that might just be the standard raise size for this player. Not really sure. He did have ace jack last time. Okay, let's see what happens here. Okay, we get a button raise here. This player has made a 3x raise a couple times, and he chooses to min raise here. Um, I can't imagine a better spot for a re-steal here. Uh, I would shove all in with this Jack-10 suited all day long. Uh, I would at least flat it, uh, but I think shoving in is the best play, period, uh, here. But at least flatting it, uh, it chooses to fold here. This is too tight. Uh, I would squeeze this as well. I would shove all in with this Ace-10 suited and make a squeeze play. It'll get you heads up and an all-in confrontation with like 800 chips and dead money with a stack of 2200 that's excellent uh, so I think shoving all in here with the ace 10 suits the right play she uses flat that's okay as well I think shoving is the best play I think flatting is the second best play and I think folding is the worst play uh, we get a four-way uh, pot here uh, jack seven deuce two spades and no hand no draw here for our hero so just let it go which he does This is an excellent shove. Uh, I'm surprised he shoved this loosely because I've seen a little bit of tightness in the previous hands. This is the right play. It's an excellent shove. Uh, you can shove a little looser than this, but most players, uh, until their shove game is really on point, don't know they can make this shove. Uh, but this is the right play. It's a good shove. Uh, 
Looks like he'll get caught here, but that doesn't change the fact that he made the right decision. And it'll work out for him as well, and he'll accumulate a nice chip stack and move into second place here. Queen seven, just going to be a fold here. He could have shoved had it been folded to him. Queen ten off. This is actually a, a mandatory shove, and the reason why is if you if you make a small raise with this, Lindoya can come over the top, and you can't call due to the bubble dynamic in ICM. If you make a small raise here, and this player shoves, you have to call. Um, so, and you can profitably open shove it against both players, so, and that's what I'd recommend doing. Generally on the bubble, uh, something I found to be a pretty good uh, rule uh, is that you take smaller edges but guaranteed edges by open shoving rather than making small raises and giving your opponent the opportunity to come over the top and make you fold. Uh, ICM can be used both offensively and defensively here on the bubble. Uh, you want to use it defensively um, by preventing players from being able to come over the top. Uh, and you want to use it offensively um, by preventing that from ever happening at all. Uh, if you make a small raise here, uh, they can come over the top and just force you to fold, uh, this player at least. Uh, and anyone really that your stack size or more could do that too. So I, I recommend just shoving it. It's a good shove spot. Fold the 10 deuce. Uh, this is a very excellent fold made by PGM. Uh, a lot of players would mistakenly call here. Um, it's not that your hand isn't good enough to call uh, in general. The problem is it's on the bubble, and your calls have to be tighter when there's a short stack available due to ICM implications. So the fact that he chooses to fold here is actually quite impressive. This is the play you should be making. Uh, Ace-5 is going to be a shove here. Uh, he chooses to make a small raise. This is a mistake. Um, basically by making this small raise you're giving opponents an opportunity to push you off your hand if this player shoves or this player shoves you have to fold due to ICM if this player shoves you really should be calling um, based on odds and ICM you, you should really be calling this player if you're raising into him no matter what I think he actually folds here yeah he, he folds here so um, it's definitely a good shove spot um, he is right at 10 blinds. Uh, he really should have shoved this. If he's not willing to call any player shove, why even raise at all? I mean, you're basically just hoping that everyone folds to you, and you don't have enough room to maneuver post-flop. So, I mean, your hand is essentially the same as deuce 7 if you're playing it like this. I mean, it really doesn't matter what you have if you're just going to lay it down. So just open shove it. Uh, play it in a way that's not exploitable, like where you raise here and just fold. And then really folding to this all in here is kind of unforgivable. I mean, these odds are excellent, as good as they get. So uh, the raising the fold to this is, is definitely a mistake. Just open shove it. And look what happened to the chip stack as a result. I mean, this is what exactly what you want to avoid on the bubble. Has to call here with ace-king, especially as a short stack. Uh, this shove with jack-5 is not good. It looks like he'll move into a pretty good spot here. Um, there are some players I'll actually just shove this 8-3 suited on the bubble here if I think they're tight enough. This isn't one of those spots, but uh, it, it is in the realm of possibility. It looks like it moved into three-handed play here, so he is in the money. Go ahead and continue on here. Fold the 9-7. Fold the 5-8. King-Queen. Um, I'd raise it up or shove. Either play is fine. He chooses to raise it up. Get shoved on. You should call this shove. Um, you're in the money already. There's a little bit of a bubble between third and, and second playing for the win, but I mean, if you're not willing to call this shove here, if you raise, then just shove yourself because the pan can be profitably shoved and you're only like 13 blinds deep. So uh, if he's unwilling to call this shove, he should shove himself. Uh, but really, you should raise this up and be willing to call any all in. That's how I'd play it. But open shoving it would be fine as well. Just don't raise and fold it. That's That's definitely a mistake. And the biggest mistake, of course, is open folding it, which you would never want to do. Okay, blinds have gone up. 5-7 suited should be shoved. It's folded here. It's too tight. Uh, fold the deuce 5. Uh, go all in with the ace 5. That's what he does. No call. Limping is terrible here in this short. Uh, open shove the ace 8 is obviously the correct play. Uh, walk with the king eight. Uh, 
Now he chooses to fold this king seven. This is an excellent play. Normally you'd shove this all day for like 11 blinds here and blind versus blind, but because of the presence of this short stack, you're going to have to play a little tighter in your shoves, and you correctly and astutely uh, chooses to fold here. That's what you should do. Fold to king seven. These two players will collide. We'll still have three-handed play here. Fold the eight five. King deuce is going to be a fold. Queen six. Um, this is really close um, because the chip stacks are getting closer. I would recommend a shove here. It's close, but I'd recommend a shove. He does choose to fold a little bit too tight. Definitely fold the queen deuce into the short stack. Okay, we'll move into heads up play here. And the standard shove with the king eight, standard call with queen jack. And looks like he'll take second in this. Uh, so a couple spots that were missed opportunities that were played a little too tightly. Also a couple bubble spots that were played very, very well, uh, where he made very uh, excellent folds and spots that a lot of players would come along in correctly. So uh, a couple of things that were done really well, a couple spots that need improvement. Uh, once again, thank you, PGM, for uh, supplying these games so we can review PokerStars' new structure. For any of you who have questions, feel free to contact me at againsttime at gmail.com. Also, you can do the same for training. Thank you.